Dougie. Hey, what's up, T-Mac? What's going on, Doug? How you doing, man? Good, good. Uh, first off, just have to ask, you know, with your health history, uh, just what's your level of concern with, uh, you know, coaching in this environment? Did you give any thoughts to, to not coach in this season? Nah, I mean, I, I do my best to keep my my body in the best shape that I can, uh, and put the best things in my body. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not really concerned about it. Just excited to be back, uh, be around the guys, uh, coach them up, trying to, you know, take that next step, getting better every day. You know, so that's that's to me that's the most important. I'm not really worried about the health part. I just got to take care of myself. I I can run into issues at home. Okay. And then just as far as uh, you know, evaluating returners without preseason games, how are you going to be able to go about doing that? You figure it out. You <laughs> I don't know, man. We just out there coaching them up. You know, uh, I'm sure I'm sure we'll we'll do some things uh, to evaluate them throughout the process as far as just catching balls and just, you know, just going through the process of practicing and, and see who's doing what. You know, you, you know how that is. That, that return game is, is different. Uh, you don't know until you get into a game and you put a guy in a situation. So we won't have games. So that's just the reality of, of our situation. And we just got to make do with what we have. Thanks. Pat Leonard. Hey, Team Mac, hope you're well. Um, Two-parter, one, related to the health are you staying in the team hotel and do you have to take any additional precautions um, in this current environment? Um, and then the second part, uh, well, I'll ask you the second one after this, sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm like everybody else. I'm, I, I stay at home and I, I try and uh, isolate myself as much as possible. Uh, I literally get in my car, drive to work, go to work, get in my car, drive home, and go right upstairs to my apartment. So, I mean, I, I try my best. Every once in a while, I might have to stop at a store or something, but for the most part, you know, I'm here at the office and I'm in my apartment. So that's that's the only way I could, you know, I could do it. So I was doing the same thing at home when I was in Houston. Uh, my second part was, you know, how disappointing obviously was it uh, that Aldrich Rosas isn't a part of the team anymore. I know that was a, a player, of course, you, you put a lot of time into coaching. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Aldrich to death, but, you know, it's a new day, new opportunity. Uh, Aldrich's going to be fine. Uh, he knows how I feel about him, and you're right. It was disappointing. Thanks. Ryan? Hey, T-Mac. Good to see you. Uh, hey, what's going on, Ryan? Picking up on what Pat just said, the opposite side of Aldrich Rosas is Chandler Catanzaro. What, uh, what experience do you have with him? Why was he the right guy for you guys coming out of reti coming out of retirement? Do you know what he was even up to the last year? Yeah, I mean, Chandler's a guy who's, who's a veteran kicker in this league. Uh, he's performed at a high level before, and uh, we're just hoping to get him back to that level. Uh, he, he's, he's a hard worker, very conscientious, and, and it's just, you know, his availability, availability was there, and uh, we took advantage of bringing him in. And hopefully we can get him rolling and, and uh, get him up the bar. Was he still training, like, for the last year on his own, or is he just starting from scratch again now? Yeah, he was still training. Thanks. Zach? Hey, man, you, you were in uh, Carolina the, in James Bradbury's first two years there. I, I was curious what, what you remember about him from back then and, and how excited you were to bring him in when the Giants signed him this offseason. Very excited for, for James and the organization. Uh, good man, works his tail off, uh, very quiet and unassuming, and he's a, he has a workmanlike mentality. You know, he comes in, he does his job. He's like a, you know, a little church mouse in the room. You won't even know he's there, you know, and uh, great kid, and I'm excited to have him. Thanks. Emory, Coach, hope you're well. Um, question with the reps being what they are, uh, where is the biggest challenge you see for guys coming in trying to get acclimated to playing special teams as far as the coverage standpoint? Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's hard because these young guys, you know, normally they get, they get the speed of the game uh, during the preseason game, so they get just a little taste of it, you know, this year it's going to be hard for them to, to get that experience because you don't have that game like intensity, you know. So, you know, it's, it's just tough. We're just going to make do with what we got. And, and in order to, uh, you know, 
we have to do a good job of trying to simulate that in practice so we know exactly what we're doing and evaluating our guys. Lombardo. Hey, T Mac. Good to see you, man. Hey, man. How you doing? Good, good. Um, I'm curious with Joe Judge's special teams background, um, what his influence has been on your group in particular. And everybody talks about, you know, special teams coaches having that experience commanding a room and commanding the whole team. Um, just what he's been like in that regard since he's taken over, or since you guys have actually been able to get together as a team in the last. Joe's been awesome, man. It's It's been, I, I can't even begin to tell you, it, it's been very enlightening. And he has been outstanding. So I, I just look forward to getting the season going and uh, just watching him grow as, as a, a new head coach and uh, just see how far he can take us. Has there been any sort of influence that he's brought with him his time coaching in the apply to the Giants special teams this year? Say it again, you broke up just a little bit. I was curious if he's brought anything in terms of philosophies with the way New England runs their special teams. I know they brought in Nate Ebner um, that he's kind of imparted on you to bring to the Giants this year. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's kind of a, a, a perfect marriage. You know, uh, Joe has a ton of experience, has a ton of success in the league. And uh, we just sit down and just come up with the things that we feel like that are good for the, uh, for the unit, and we just implement them. It's, it's not any – I mean, it's an easy conversation. It's, it flows great, and uh, we just put the stuff together that's going to help the team the best. So we put it all out there. Guys love it. They eat it up. And we just go out there and just you know, just, <laughs> just do it on the field, you know, practice it, walk through it, you know, all those different things. It's, just, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's a really good situation. We're going to take three more, uh, Patty, Kim, and Schwartz, to, to end it with T-Mac. Patty? Hey, Coach. How are you? How you doing, Patty? I'm doing well, thanks. I have two questions for you. Uh -huh. when, you were, when you were looking at kickers after, you know, releasing Aldrich, how important was it for those kickers to have had experience kicking in the Northeast winds? Uh, you, you always want to have somebody who uh, who's had experience kicking in the Northeast, you know, uh, that was huge. And, uh, you know, obviously getting Chandler, who's, who's actually kicked in this exact stadium, uh, was a benefit. And then uh, my other question has to do with the college tape. You know, we, we, you mentioned earlier that it's going to be kind of tricky. There are some things that you can do to evaluate returners and whatnot. I know the speed of the game is a little faster at the NFL level, but in this case, how, how, good of an indicator is going, is the college tape going to be on these return candidates that you brought in? You're going to have to lean heavily on it, but we all know there's a transition between, you know, college and the pros. And uh, again, it's going to be a difficult situation for all of us as evaluators to be able to uh, make sure that we're, we're making the right decisions, but that's just the situation that we're in. We got to make do with it. Uh, we're all, everybody in the league's in the same situation. So, you know, we're not the, you know, we're not the only team in the league that has to deal with this process. So we're just trying to find the best way to handle it. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Kim? Hey, T-Mac. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Good. Um, you've kind of touched on this, but, but I guess I'll give it a whirl since I have a, a chance to ask you a question here. Um, especially with young players who often make their way to the NFL through special teams. Um, how will you allow them to reach a competitive level where you can really evaluate them knowing they won't have those preseason games, but, but obviously there's some care and concern that you have when players at your own practices get too intense. Yeah, we just, it's a fine line. You know, we just have to uh, be able to watch them in the drill work and, and the, the stuff that we'll do simulate in practice that'll simulate games. And we just have to, you know, just to put our, our best foot forward as evaluators. I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's, I'm not going to sit here and say it's easy, but again, everybody in the league got to deal with the same situation. So we'll simulate as much as we can in practice, the speed of everything as much as we can in practice, and uh, we'll come up with the best 53 at the end of the year in the, in the uh, training game. Thank you. Last one here, Schwartz. Hey, Tom, it's good to see you. Um, good. A um, couple of things. Uh, number one, uh, you've always worked for a head coach who's been an offense or defensive guy. You mentioned a little bit about Joe Judge, just about the dynamic of, you know, 
special teams has always been kind of your thing, and the head coaches kind of leave you alone, I guess. Does Joe Judge put more in, is, is the dynamic different because he is a special teams guy, not an offensive, defensive guy? And just number two, real quick, your thoughts on Nate Ebner, who's been a good special teams player for a long time. Yeah, Joe is Joe's a football coach. Let's let's make no mistake about that. He's he's not just a special teams coach. He is a football coach. He coaches it all, and that's the you know that's the thing that I enjoy about watching him work. Uh, but like I said earlier, it's easy for me. Like I'm I'm a, I'm a team guy, and whatever's gonna do, whatever's gonna be best for the team, we're gonna do it, uh, regardless of the situation. And it's it's been really good. Like I said, it's almost like a perfect marriage. I mean, it's there are no issues. Like, okay, how we want to do it? We'll do it this way? Okay, boom. We'll do it this way. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. You know, so I, again, I, I don't have any issue with it. And, I, and I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the process. And one thing about Nate Ebner, I mean, he's a real special team specialist, isn't he? Yeah, Nate's awesome. He's, he's a good man, uh, works extremely hard. He's a great teammate and he comes with, he brings a lot to the table. He, he comes with a lot of experience. Uh, he's really good with the young players. And again, first things first with him, he's a team guy. So, Thanks. Yep. Thanks, T-Mac. Guys, I appreciate it. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say anything about uh, the Tish family. I want to send out condolences to them. Uh, you know, anytime you lose a family member, that's, that's always a tough thing. So just let them know we're in the thoughts and prayers.